the morning roast on 95.7, the game. Oh, man. I mean, two years off. It wasn't really off. Watching the finals and the playoffs last couple of years would kill me. And just to be back on this stage, I'm so thankful for my teammates. The start they had this year, 18-2, and two, it really laid the foundation for what was to come. And it's crazy. I'm on, a, I'm on cloud 109 right now. At least I don't even know what to say. That is Clay Thompson, who's now a four-time NBA champion. What a season for him. Came back for 32 regular season games after missing 941 days of basketball. And he comes back and wins an NBA championship. Played really well in the finals, averaging over 17 points per game. Struggled the first two games and then really turned it on there for the Golden State Warriors. Defensively was really good. Clay is back and he's going to be better than ever next season, of course. And let's bring his father on to the show. Two-time champion with the L.A. Lakers. Former number one overall pick, Champagne and Nuts on Twitter, Michael Thompson. We love Tom- Michael Thompson here on the Morning Roast on 95.7 The Game. Good morning, Michael. And first of all, you, your lovely wife, Julie, Trace, Michael, you guys must be so damn proud of Clay Thompson, what he accomplished this year after missing two full seasons of basketball. Yeah, you know, it really is uh, when you think back and reflect on the past season, the last couple of years, to really, really make you realize how blessed you are and be so grateful and, and uh, so appreciative of all the things that uh, have come about that's transpired lately. And uh, to see him come back from two injuries like that and accomplish this uh, achievement, it's unprecedented in team sports history, I believe. Someone coming back from two devastating injuries, joining his team halfway through the season and then ending up as a champion, I can't think of any other scenario where that has happened. You know, Michael, there are times in my life where my dad needs to kind of pick me up and, and, you know, just kind of give me a talking, if you will, whether it be inspirational or get my face over something. Was there ever a point where you maybe had to help pick up Clay because he was just a little down in the dumps? Well, I mean, you try to, you know, but uh, a lot of times you you feel like you're alone, even though you got a lot of support around you from family and friends and from your team and teammates. Uh, but still, it can be a lonely place when you're injured like that and uh, your teammates are out there playing and you feel like you're not part of it because you can't be out there. you got to go off and rehab basically on your own. So it can become a dark and lonely place for you, but you have to just keep striving and think ahead and be patient and say, if I do what I'm supposed to do, I'll, uh, all the doctors are telling me I'll come back at 100%. So you have to keep that in the back of your mind as you uh run into some struggles from time to time because we are human. Yes. I mean, we try not to sweat the small stuff or try to try to feel sorry for ourselves. We're very human because there's always someone worse off than you out there. You know, people dealing with terminal Ill- illnesses, homelessness. Uh, people can't find a job and they have a family to support. So you got to try to keep things in perspective, even though you're having a tough time yourself. Yeah, that's uh, well said. Well said. And, uh, you know, you saw Clay hug Rick Celebrini there. He, he referenced multiple times in the postgame about him and James Wiseman just working with each other, the other G-leaguers, his own brother throughout that journey. What was that circle like as he tried to work himself back? Well, that's part of the... Uh the process, the rehab process and getting back to, to the playing game that he has such a good support system around him. And even though he, sometimes you would feel like you're alone, he knew that he wasn't alone because he had Rick there to, to, to guide him through. He had his teammates there, you know, knowing, telling him he's going to be back and they, they can't wait to get him back. And, of course, family members around him. A lot of people were praying for him, uh, members of our church. So, um, you know, divine intervention played a big, huge part in this too. God, God definitely healed him. No doubt about that. Michael Thompson here on the morning roast. The father of Clay Thompson, a two-time champ in his own right. Now six rings in that family right now. Uh, Michael, when you think about his personality, I remember when he was drafted 11th overall back in 2012. And he, Darrell Wright, who I work with on NBC Sports Warriors pre- and post-game live, you came on the set of, about a month ago, or well, I think it was during the finals. And Darrell used to always say, man, Clay would never say anything his rookie season. Now when you look at Clay Thompson, he's in his early 30s. He's got the personality that the Bay Area loves. He's Captain Clay. He's Toaster Clay. He's Game 6 Clay. He's on the bus. He's getting off the bus. He's doing the Michael Jackson. He's dropping his championship ring. Are you surprised at your son's personality in a way? Like, he's become a legend out here in the Bay Area and, and so beloved. I didn't see this type of person coming out when he was a rookie. Yeah, neither did I. Cause, uh, he's a lot <laughs> like his mother. He just doesn't really like the spotlight, doesn't like to be the focal point, uh, doesn't need to be. Um, because that's how his character is. And to see him, uh, his personality come through and be so outgoing and still such an extrovert, it's definitely different because as a kid in uh, junior high, high school, he's very quiet. I mean, he'll be funny around his friends and outgoing around his friends, but in the public eye, yeah, Clay was always kind of shy and quiet. But 
I think uh, now, especially at 32 years of age, and after the miss the last two years, I think he's just uh, soaking in every possible moment he can because he knows it's not going to last forever. So you better enjoy every every second that you mm-hmm. can, and you know, and and connect, reconnect with the fans when you have a chance. Well, what makes him and Steph's relationship so unique? I mean, you've seen so many great relationships, whether it's a front row seat for the Lakers, you've seen it with your Golden State Warriors, and you just have a, a good feel for the league in general. Well, but what makes their relationship so unique on and off the court? Maturity, professionalism, and respect. Uh, they're very mature young men. Uh, they're, they're, they're the epitome of professionalism. Uh, they're winners, and they respect each other, and that's all that matters. It doesn't matter who gets uh, the credit or most of the limelight, even even though Steph deserves it. Clay gets his fair share of it. So does Draymond. So does Andre Iguodala. So does every member of that team get their fair share of attention because the attention and respect comes with winning, and they're all a bunch of winners and champions up there. How impressed were you with Clay taking in guys like Moses Moody and Jordan Poole? That, that made me feel good to see that. He wants to be a mentor to the younger players, the way Kobe Bryant and Clyde Drexler and Rasheed Wallace and Magic Johnson was to him. They took time out uh, when he was a youngster to give him advice and to give him guidance and to see him give that back to a young guy like Moses Moody and James Weissman makes me feel good, makes me proud to see that he's sharing his, his advice and his wisdom with the younger guys and trying to get those guys to live up to all their potential. So that's real Real manly. That's the place being a man about that. That's great to see. Hey, you know, my pops critiques my driving uh, ad nauseum when he's in the car with me. Do you critique Clay's boat driving skills? <laughs> no, man. Clay is uh, an accomplished sea captain now. <laughs> like he, he can go out there and probably uh, do some kind of a cross uh, ocean ocean crossing. He knows how to navigate. And I I read where some uh, some of the the, fer- the Bay Area ferries want to co- wanted to come out there and uh, they pilot one of the ferries. So he definitely should take them up on that offer. That'd be exciting. No doubt about that. Michael Thompson on the morning Russell two type chap in his own right to father Clay Thompson, of course, who just won his fourth championship. And I was reading some things where he joined CBS Radio and you were talking about hey if the Warriors keep this thing together and bring everybody back, which is Kevon Looney, Gary Payton the second, and of course James Wiseman, who for some reason a lot of people have written off, but I remember him as a rookie averaging eleven and six. He didn't even know what he was doing yet. You just don't walk into 11-6 and six in the NBA. You believe the Warriors can win another two to three championships, right? Listen, man, Joe Laker and Peter Gruber, Bob Myers, they have to learn the lesson from the Chicago Bulls, Kobe and Shaq's Lakers, and the fact that when KD left, don't break it up too soon. The Bulls broke theirs up too soon. They could have won another couple. But for some reason, they got tired of winning chip, ring rings. I, explain that to me. Shaq and Kobe have something special here. Even they said, and they've admitted that they mm-hmm. shouldn't have broken, they shouldn't have left each other separated because they had more championships to win. KD left to go pursue a ring someplace else. He should have stayed because they have something. But when you have something as special as the Warriors have right now in the palm of their hands, you keep it together as long as possible till you, to, to you suck out every last possible drop of fuel. And uh, they better keep this team together for the next, I mean, everybody, keep them together for the next four or five years, and they can win uh, se- several more rings. They are that good and that deep because. As uh, Clay, Steph, and Dre get older, they have the youngsters coming up behind them who could take up a lot of the slack, and that way they could preserve Clay, Draymond, and uh, Steph for some minutes and let them play late into their 30s and be still all star caliber players. I mean, wow, what you said there is just in- incredible. The thing that I find interesting is that you reference all these different you know, scenarios. Kevin Durant right. you reference, and Shaq and Kobe, and just egos. People want different things at different mm-hmm. points in their life. So many things could have ripped this apart. Like, What was the moment where you like doubted this unit ever getting back? Is it because your son was missing for two years? Was it simply just returning to health? Because I do think it was fair to question, like, ah, are these guys on the back end of their careers? It feels like they're not, but wasn't there points throughout it where you doubted it? A little bit, yeah. I mean, we knew to get be a playoff team again when Clay gets back and Steph stays healthy and Draymond, and then with the youngsters, we knew they'd be a serious playoff contender again, but right. a champion this soon? No, I didn't. I didn't foresee that. If I would have said that uh, last October that the Warriors going to win a championship, out of the, I, I can't say that I did. I thought, yeah, they'd be a playoff team again because mm-hmm. we all thought maybe the Lakers are going to come out of the West or Phoenix, but uh, the Warriors, no. But now that we see what they have, especially with the young core behind. The three uh, Hall of Famers, man, they've got something special here, and the Warriors are going to be on top for years to come. And if they stay healthy, I, I mean, obviously the Lakers, uh, I think my Lakers could contend, but boy, they are the favorites. The Warriors are the favorites to win it again next year with good health. Wow. Michael Thompson here on the Morning Russell on 95.7 in game, spitting hot fire. And when you talk about Hall of Famers, 
Clay, Dre, Steph, the winningest trio in finals history, winning 21 games in the NBA Finals. They surpassed Duncan, Ginobili, Tony Parker. They surpassed your Showtime Lakers, Michael, and you were part of that great dynasty in the 80s. You won two championships on the tail end of that. 87 against the Celtics, and of course against the Pistons in the seven-game classic. Where is this dynasty going to stack up? Uh, where does it stack up as of today with the four championships compared to those great Laker teams in the 80s, the Celtics teams in the 80s, the Bulls in the 90s? Where does this dynasty stack up in your opinion? I think they're tapping Michael's Bulls on the shoulder and also Magic's uh, Showtime Lakers. They're tapping them on the shoulder. But I think the tear to, to sort of stand shoulder to shoulder with Jordan's Bulls and Magic's Showtime Lakers, especially those guys. Because Magic went to five and won five out of nine finals. Of course, Michael won six out of eight. For the Warriors to get there shoulder to shoulder with those two franchises, those two dynasties, they need to win a couple more. Uh, maybe one more. If they can win another one next year to tie Magic's Lakers, I, then I could say they are right there uh, among the top three in the modern era because obviously wow. Bill Russell's Celtics right. set the standard with 11 rings. Mm-hmm. You always overlook those guys. You never <laughs> mention those guys, but out of respect, they deserve to be mentioned, and maybe they are number one and will always be number one until someone gets to 11 rings. Yeah, 11 and 13 the, years. That's insane. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I don't want to disrespect Bill Russell and Bob Cousy and Sam Jones and Casey Jones and those guys, so let's mm-hmm. say they're number one. But to be number two, I think the Warriors have to uh, win another one to be up there with the Bulls and uh, the uh, Magic Lakers. You know, I'm hearing all these guys, Draymond, Clay, your son going at it on these Memphis Grizzlies in the post game after <laughs> winning it all. What was it about Memphis that really got under their skin? Well, I don't know. Uh, maybe because Memphis, uh, they're young and they're brash and they talk a lot of trash on, on social media. Um, D- Dylan Brooks hurt uh, uh, Gary yeah. Payton. Maybe that, that was all simmering underneath. But until the Grizzlies win something, I wouldn't even worry about what they say. Yeah, I like them. I respect the Grizzlies because they're young and talented and they're a team on the rise. No question about it. The the Warriors are going to have to deal with them in years to come. But until they win something, I would only be worried about uh, Milwaukee and, uh, you know, teams like that. And who else has won a championship recently? The teams like that and Toronto teams that have won a championship until – so the Grizzlies get there, I wouldn't worry about it. Well, you, the Lakers won that that Mickey Mouse bubble tournament oh, don't championship, do that. <laughs> but that's neither here nor there. Yeah, well, you know uh, that's true. They, they call it a bubble championship, but hey, the other teams were there trying to win it too. So nope. <laughs> no doubt. And how and before we let you go, I had Michael, to tease you. It, sorry, it, Michael, it must have felt great yeah. to see your son beat the Boston Celtics and, and to go to Corbett? State Warriors and win on the parquet floor. How cool was that? Yeah, you got a, you got a point there, Bonte. Uh, two things. Two things. They shut up my boy Cornbad Maxwell because he was killing me after Game Three when the when the Celtics got that two to one lead. And then they uh, Steve Kerr and the Warriors play. Everybody did the Laker fans a big favor by keeping us tied seventeen to seventeen and didn't let the Celtics get that eighteen championship. So thank you, Warriors, for keeping us tied and not letting the Celtics get that lead. Hey, you've seen a few parades in your day. Yeah. How would you rate that one we had just the other day? Because <laughs> I was in front and then behind Otto's and Clay's bus. And let me tell you, I've never seen anything like the way the fans were reacting to those two on that bus. I thought it was a beautiful, awesome day. Yeah, the parades in Oakland, on the Oakland side of the bay, was great. But the one in the uh, on Monday, uh, I had never seen anything like that. We had big parades in L.A., of course, when the Lakers won. Mm-hmm. But uh, San Francisco, the Bay Area, nobody does parades like the Bay Area, man. You guys were, you guys were off the charts. So that was crazy. Appreciate that. And, and last one before we let you go, Michael, i got to ask you because I'm reading the Showtime Lakers book uh, based off the movie Winning Time. But it's more truth to the book than it is the TV show. I want to get your opinion on the television show if you watched it at all because I'm reading a book about how that dynasty came about and I'm getting to the part where you joined the team really Really fascinating Showtime Lakers dynasty with Dr. Jerry Buss. Yeah, that's a fascinating uh, era in the, in the league. It was a t- time of glamour and splash, and the Lakers were great for the league. And obviously the Celtics with Larry Bird, because they definitely put the NBA back on the map, took mm-hmm. the NBA off of uh, tape delay and put them back on prime time. So that was a great era and a very exciting time to be around the Lakers because it was Hollywood. It was Showtime, baby. <laughs> hey, before you get on out of here, there's so much like there's so much 24 seven media, and it, it feels ridiculous. You have a son who plays. You're obviously been there every step of the way with the Lakers. You hear everything. I'm sure you see everything. You're cognizant of it all. The way the media portrays all of these teams today. This guy's got to get yeah. traded. Anthony Davis for Kyrie. Trade Jordan Poole. Trade Wiggins. Trade. The, what's your just assessment on media in general and how we're covering the current NBA? 
Oh, I love it because it keeps the NBA and the uh, consciousness of the sporting public. Back when I played, you only really read about the NBA in the morning papers after a game. But now it's nonstop coverage. It's great publicity for the league. Everybody's now a GM because of social media. So I love I love reading all the stuff, all the speculation, all the rumors and gossip. So wow. keep it coming. The more coverage, the better. Yeah, no doubt. Kyrie on your Lakers straight up for Anthony Davis? You doing that? No, no, that's not going to happen. Anthony yeah. Davis is when he's healthy, when he's right, one of the top five or six players in the in the game. So he's not going anywhere. Lakers will be back I had next to just year. Tease that one. Well, sorry, no, he teasing the Lakers, I'm but sorry. man, the Lakers go be back, and Laker Nation will be inside a chase hitter, Man, they represent hard for the purple and gold. Wait a minute. What is Joe saying? You don't believe Anthony Davis is that good? No, no. I was just like I was just poking the bear on the Lakers because I just I, I want to see Kyrie get teamed up with LeBron. You know, that's all. Just... Yeah. Hey, obviously the, the the Warriors don't need Kyrie. Memphis doesn't need Kyrie because they've got dynamic point guards yeah. already. But everybody else, if Kyrie's available, if I'm a team, I go out there and try to get it. The Miami Memphis. Heat. Miami Heat. You don't think Pat Riley wants to upgrade? You heard him. You heard the way he was talking after the Eastern Conference Finals. Oh, yeah, man. Kyrie, even though he's eccentric and he can be a little odd sometimes, man, he is a special <laughs> talent. And obviously, like I said, the Warriors in Memphis don't need him, or even Dallas. Right. But if you are another team, boy, you go out and try to get him if he's available. Hey, Michael, we could talk all I day know, long. I know you got to run, yes, man. We Anthony love talking Davis to you. Davis is a great player. Yeah, I agree with is. that. When he's healthy, no, no there's doubt. no question. No doubt. Michael, and take no, care, man. Let me, re- let me correct you guys. It's not six rings, it's nine rings. Six, nine rings? Nine rings. Two is a two is a player, four is a father, and three is an announcer. Ah, right, there you go. Good I love that. You. you know what? That's that that's well incredible. done, Michael. Only you that can get away incredible. with that one. We'll get that one for you. Hey, Nine rings. Tell, <laughs> that's right. Tell tell Bill Russell two more, and I'm going to catch him. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, we can't wait to talk to you again, man. Uh, Enjoy the off season, man. Congratulations <laughs> to you and the family. We're so proud of Clay Thompson, yeah, for real. and I know I'm sure you You're are as sport. a proud father. Your lovely wife Julie as well. A proud of Clay in the way he came back this season. Oh, my pleasure, guys. Yeah, so it's really special. Clay is very blessed. The Thompson family is very blessed, and we're just very thankful for all the all the blessings God has given us. Yeah. No doubt about that. And, Michael, and enjoy, yeah. man. We'll talk to you Thank soon. Thank you, Michael. Okay, talk to you later. Michael Thompson, Champagne and Nuts here on Twitter. He was about to strengthen you with the Andy Davis stuff. Man. I was like, yo. I so, had to poke the bear nah, a little. Yeah, you know that. The interview was going so well, you just wanted to poke the bear anyway. Just on the Kyrie so, AD thing. Just like just stick the stick in there. Uh, you know, and then he, like the 